question number one. What is your name and location? My name is Darren Peachy, and I'm located in Brandon, Florida. What is the job or jobs you are doing? I actually have two jobs right now. My main job is I work as an IT manager for a healthcare organization, Lakeland Regional Health. And my second job, I am the owner of a wedding videography business. What do you do as part of your job? So for my IT management job, um, there's a lot that I'm actually involved in. Uh, I have a team of around nine people. Uh, we work in clinical systems. Our EHR, which is electronic health record, is called Cerner. This is what doctors and nurses basically use um, to be able to take care of patients, to plan out the care of a patient while they're in the hospital. Um, this is how they do all of their documentation. Everything is electronic. Um, before things like Cerner, uh, everything was done on paper. So everything that was originally done on paper is now done on the computer. As an IT manager, I manage different um, parts of the team. Uh, we have a physician support team that specifically handles support for physicians. And we have a nursing support team that handles support specifically for nurses. Uh, we have a few other team members that do a few different things. I also have some what we call ambulatory clinics. So if you go and see your primary care provider, um, that's what we consider an ambulatory clinic. For videography, you know, being the owner, I um, correspond with uh, potential couples who, who approach me looking for videography for their, uh, for their wedding. I also go out and I film weddings, um, and I also am involved in the editing process. So, you know, in, in addition to all of the operational things that I'm doing, I'm also involved in, you know, the administrative portions, right? Having to pay taxes, having to deal with an account accountant, having, you know, business insurance, all of those things I do myself. All right. What type of education do you need to get the job? Um, you know, I have an MBA. Uh, I didn't need an MBA to get the IT management position that I'm in, although I, I think that did definitely help. Um, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about kind of my uh, journey at Lakeland Regional Health. I actually started out in food service um, back when I was still uh, at the end of high school, like right as I started college, I was, I was working in, in food service at, um, at Lakeland Regional. And, you know, I, I, I went to college, I got an AA, and then I, I had graduated with a, with a bachelor's from USF in history and humanities doesn't really seem like something that would line up well with food service or eventually with IT, right? Um, but, you know, through my work in food service, I kind of found my way into the IT portion of food service. I mean, we still use an electronic system down there. It was called Seaboard. And I kind of just put my foot in the door and said, hey, I'd really like to learn more about this software and what can I do to help? And, you know, they kind of made a position for me, which gave me a little bit of IT experience, which I then took and transferred into the IT department. And I started off in the IT department as a junior analyst, the, the lowest level that you could get into, um, mostly because I had a college degree. And I worked my way up. Started off as an analyst level one, went to a level two, a level three, a level four, and then eventually found my way into leadership as a manager. Um, on the videography side of things, I don't really, I didn't have a college degree per se, but I definitely spent a lot of time in high school while I was at McKeel Academy in Lakeland um, in the television productions class. I was very interested in that. I, I edited my my senior classes, um, you know, class video. Uh, I, I learned a lot about Final Cut Pro. Um, so I, I was really fascinated and very interested in, in filming. And I took that into college as well, trying to use, you know, film and media as often as I possibly could for every project that I was working on while I was in college. Um, you know, getting the MBA, which is a, a Master's of Business Administration, really did help um, teach me a lot about how to run a business, you know, what are some of the things that are really important. I think the one thing that I really took away from that was, you know, the importance of customer service 
and you know how to treat the customer and being in the wedding industry um, it's all about treating the customer you know I mean you're there to serve uh, a purpose you're, you're there to you know capture somebody's memories you know um, all of the great moments of this very special day in their lives that only happens typically only happens one time but you know everything that's happening during that day only happens once right you know uh, when they have their ceremony and they walk down the aisle there's no second take there's no second chance to, to do those things over you get one shot at doing that so it's really it's a highly you know pressurized type of uh, position to be in but um, but yeah you know I, I didn't have to have any specific um, college degree to be able to do that that that's really come out of just being fascinated in, in thinking of film as like a hobby and kind of turning that into a business what would you tell kids who are struggling to find direction, seeing their future self? Um, you know, what I would say is, you know, when I was getting out of high school, I did not really have any idea what I wanted to do. You know, IT and wedding videography was probably the furthest thing uh, from my mind. You know, um, I got out of high school thinking that I was going to probably be involved in music of some sort. Um, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Um, but what I, what I ended up doing is I, I went to community college at Polk State, and I tried to take every type of class I could. You know, I was taking a film class, I was taking sociology, humanities, you know, science, just trying to figure out, you know, what really was interesting to me. Um, and at the time, it was mostly history, philosophy, humanities, and that sort. Um, and as I continued on in, in high school, you know, or in, in college, um, I really just enjoyed doing those things. I enjoyed those subjects a lot, but I also had a job at the same time. You know, I, I maintained a full-time job while I was going through college, and it was through that full-time job that new opportunities arose. Again, I was in food service, and then I found my way into IT. I graduated with a college degree, and that helped me um, get into IT and from there it just sort of expanded you know I, I just had more opportunities to continue to grow went back to school to get to get an MBA but as you can see I didn't go to school specifically for computer technology or computer science or anything that might be considered IT related um, a lot of people are fortunate enough to, to have that all figured out right out of high school I just simply did not um, as far as like, you know, videography goes and kind of thinking about that, you know, if you have something that you are passionate about, something that you love to do, you know, there's always a way to try to, to try to, you know, find a way to make money out of that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, a lot of people like to take pictures. A lot of people like to shoot video, you know, for fun and stuff. And that's all great. Um, but there are definitely opportunities out there where maybe you're helping out another business or you get into the wedding industry and you know you can find ways to to make money out of the things that you love to do can you share a good memory about your k through 12 school experience um <laughs> you know i'm sure mr dill uh, has a lot of funny memories of me and some of my classmates and stuff i guess i guess the one thing i would share is you know i i was really into music uh, when I was in high school, I had a band, you know, had much longer hair, um, you know, and I was so obsessed with being in this band and everything that I, I actually thought that was going to be my career path, that I would do something with music. Um, and, you know, it, it didn't really pan out to be that way, especially after high school, you know, things just kind of change, people change, you move on. Um, and I realized that, you know, I needed to get a real job and, and do something that was, uh, you know, productive. You know, music is always going to be a hobby of mine. It's always going to be there and it's something I, I love to do. And there are certainly ways to make a business out of that. You know, if that's something that you're definitely passionate about, I certainly wouldn't stop anybody from doing that. But, you know, you also have to, to find ways to stay productive and continue to make progress. And maybe, you know, the current job that you're at right now in high school is you know it may seem like there's not much room for growth or opportunity but you know I, I think that you should try to keep an open mind and if there is an opportunity um, to grow you should try to take that and then take that next step it's kind of just one step at a, at a time and when one door opens you know hopefully another one will open right after that and I would just say that um, you know 
those memories of high school and stuff still stick with me. And it was always fun being, being in a band and everything. But, you know, after, after all that is said and done, I needed to uh, move on and find something, you know, that would help me, I guess, become an adult. <laughs> Yep. So, uh, you know, and I, I will just kind of finish by, you know, sort of saying the reason why I wanted to sort of present two different jobs is just to show that, you know, you can have a Monday through Friday uh, sort of job and still do something with what you love, what you might have as a hobby or what you might be passionate about, still find ways to do something on the side. People call it like a side hustle or whatever. And I mean, it is that, you know, I, I do personally enjoy attending weddings and filming these really great memories, you know, that um, that really ties into my love for history, right? I kind of talked about that a little bit when I was saying I got my degree, my undergrad in history, you know, I, I found a way to try to blend some of my interests into one thing, you know, I'm over here capturing, for some people, you know, the most special day of their lives that they're going to get to enjoy 10, 15, 20 years, you know, down the line. I'm capturing sometimes the last video of some of the of some folks you know usually like older folks like grandparents and stuff i'm capturing their last moments on film um that you know people will get to enjoy for for many years to come so you know there's to me there there is a lot a lot to that and you know i get asked this all the time like why don't you just choose one or the other why don't you go into full-time wedding um shooting weddings and stuff and you know, while that, that could certainly be a possibility to, to be able to do, I sort of don't want to do something where I'm only shooting weddings and it suddenly becomes like very dull and very mundane and I'm just doing it over and over again. And I'm doing it because it's like my livelihood and it's my only way of, my only source of, uh, of income. I feel like that would really change how I would approach approach weddings. So keeping it sort of separate and having a day job that takes care of you know, most of my income and then having something else that I can enjoy doing something that I love, but also make money from it. You know, it's kind of a nice little balance that, that really works out for me. So I would encourage anybody who has a hobby um, or something that they're very passionate about to, you know, don't give up on those things just because you might not be making money right now or maybe because you have a full-time job or something like that. Um, there are definitely ways to, to, to make money out of the things that you love to do. So... Thanks for uh, having me, Mr. Dill. I appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Oh,